my least favorite part of Leonard Cohn is uh, the notion that the light gets in through the cracks. Uh, and it's reminiscent of what Freud and Schopenhauer told us about the best we could ever do in life. Uh, for both of them, uh, the best a human being could ever do in life was to minimize his or her suffering as close to zero as possible. And the essence of my remarks is this notion that the best we can ever do in life is not to suffer is morally insidious, uh, a political and personal and artistic dead end. And uh, here's where I'm coming from, that suffering for many of us is our lot in life. Uh, but notions like that's how the light gets in celebrates mental suffering. And this is a serious psychological error. Um, many of you who follow the arts uh, have the myth of Sylvia Plath in mind, and that somehow creativity is a function of suffering. Well, it turns out we know a great deal about Sylvia Plath. And in general, what we find about creativity is that people who are bipolar, manic depressive, as Sylvia Plath was, the creativity does not occur during depression. The creativity occurs during hypomania, on the way to mania. Uh, and in general, there's quite a large literature on the relationship of emotional states to creativity, uh, 100 articles or so. And it goes strongly in the direction that in negative states like depression and anxiety, we are not creative. We fall back on what we already know. In positive states, in well-being, that's when we explore. That's when we're creative. Uh, and this, in many ways, is the essence of the field of positive psychology. Uh, in positive psychology, there are five pillars that human beings who are not suffering, who are not oppressed, seek. Positive emotion, P, for PERMA. E, engagement and flow when time stops for you, R, good relationships, M, meaning and purpose, and A, accomplishment. Um, in the creativity literature, what we find is by and large creativity in the arts, in the sciences, in literature, occurs during PERMA, during the positive states. And so the essence of my remarks is, uh, uh, about the notion of where does light get in and how does light get in. Uh, depression, mental illness, suffering interfere with creativity. So what's the appeal of that's how the light gets in through the cracks? Well, the appeal and the benefit is that we believe for those of us who suffer, for those of us who are depressives, I am one of them, we are sympathetic, we console them. But there are dangers of celebrating mental illness, of celebrating pathology. First, um, the notion that that's how the light gets in through suffering is false. So uh, creativity in people who are suffering occurs not because of the suffering, but in spite of the suffering. Sympathizing, celebrating suffering, prolongs suffering, particularly for young people. Uh, this myth that if you have a happy childhood somehow, you're uh, prevented from a, a life of creativity. It prolongs suffering. It makes people, particularly young people, seek, seek out suffering. Uh, in addition, uh, it discourages people from seeking therapy and from seeking medication for suffering. And while psychology and psychiatry are far from perfect, we do have psychotherapies and pharmacologies that relieve depression. And uh, 
What we have now, particularly among young people, is an epidemic of depression. Uh, to our dismay, we found in COVID um, uh, unprecedented levels in young people of anxiety and depression and suicide. And by telling young people somehow that the light gets in through suffering uh, contributes to the epidemic. It increases the probability of depression. It increases the probability of anxiety and it contributes to suicide. Now, I want to introduce uh, uh, what Mandy Seligman is about and that uh, Mandy has been very concerned with uh, creativity in photography. And the question is, uh, what's the right emotional state for photography? What encourages creativity in photography? And Mandy is uh, the essence of a positive psychologist. And it's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce Mandy and uh, to introduce her notion of seeing happy. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah, so as Marty was talking in the beginning, the, the five pillars of well-being, um, he talks about PERMA, P-E-R-M-N-A. Um, for a very long time, um, as a mom of five, I have enjoyed photography and it's been my creative outlook. Um, and it really ticks all the boxes. I mean, it's a joyful experience for me. It, um, it is a mindful and flow experience for me. It has created so many wonderful relationships and it's deeply meaningful. And, and actually, I think I have felt hugely accomplished, especially uh, when I turned to film photography. Um, the amount of mindfulness, flow, and accomplishment, because it was difficult. It, uh, it, it, every single pillar of positive psychology was amplified and every box ticked, for me at least. And that was before COVID, but then COVID hit. And I really found that going out and taking photographs really helped me to cope with everything else that was going on in the world. It was a way of getting out and putting my mind somewhere else. And one of the things that I particularly enjoyed was as a member of the Soho Photo in New York, we would have weekly lunches where we would just bring our photos and sit and eat lunch and we would just talk, look at each other's photos. There was no competition. There was no, uh, you know, vying for the latest um, show or anything. It was simply a group of people that love photography sitting around looking at photographs. Um, and we would help each other and we would, you know, discuss different things and give hints. And during COVID, this really, really increased my own personal well-being. Um, and after a little while, I started to think about this and I realized that it actually made a big difference where I pointed the camera. So if I took pictures of sad things, I felt sad. But when I took pictures of happy things, it really elevated my mood. I felt so much happier um, and more able to cope. I felt like there were more possibilities. Um, and we had all of our children at home during COVID. So that was a very large household. So getting supplies was difficult. And, and yet if I had a good picture that people enjoyed, you know, that I felt good about, this really helped me. Um, anyway, so part, halfway through, I decided to try something at the gallery. I, you know, I decided I was going to show my happy pictures. And I was very nervous about it because I felt that, you know, photography is supposed to be serious. And so I didn't know how uh, my happy pictures would look. So here are a couple of photographs. Those are two of our daughters. That makes me very happy. These are happy pictures. I put it together as a collection. This was in Spain. I love this little girl's face. 
anyway, I showed some of these pictures at the gallery and um, it was, there was silence and I was anxious and nervous about this. And at the end of showing the pictures, people told me that they loved them. They loved the little moments of connection that they saw. They loved the, the real amplifying of the, like, oh, I love this picture. The amplifying of positive connections. Look at this one. So it was very reinforcing to get people looking at my photos and saying, yeah, this, is, this, this made me feel better. So I realized that where we point the camera is really important. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.